All right. Well, I'm thankful again that we can meet today uh, like we're meeting. And, and let's not forget that today is Mother's Day. And, uh, and we can be thankful. You know, that's one thing everybody has or has had is a mother. So, so uh, <laughs> we can be thankful for our mothers, and uh, we may not have them with them with us anymore, but some of us do, and and uh, so, but we can be thankful uh, for the mothers that we had or or that we do have. Uh, our lesson today is Christ's baptism and temptation. The uh, memory verse is. For in that he himself has suffered, being tempted, he is able to succor them that are tempted. I want to read the emphasis. Uh, it's a junior emphasis. Keep in mind that Jesus, while on earth, was 100% man and 100% God at the same time. Like I've mentioned many times, I don't understand that. But... That's the way it was. That's the way God said it was. And, and I just take that for, for what God has said. You know, God never tells you a lie. What God tells you is 100% true. You know, uh, you know, we might say something that is not true. We might say that, and it's not a lie either. Uh, we might think it's true. And say that it that it's that you know I heard this and this and this you know or whatever, and it may not be true at all, but you thought it was true at the time. God does not have that problem. What God says is truth. It is truth. So um, so we can base our thoughts on that even though I don't understand this. Jesus was 100% man. You'd think, well, that's the whole thing. No, he was 100% God at the same time. And so, you know, I'm going to leave that with you because I cannot explain any more out of that. Then. Jesus was baptized in water. Jesus was baptized with the Holy Spirit. All three of the Trinity were present at his baptism. Jesus faced temptation and won. We can too. Jesus has promised us that not a temptation will come on us that is too strong for us to, 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 to encounter. Jesus will not allow us to be attempted above what we're able to bear. The only thing, we have to put our trust in Him. We have to be uh, baptized with the Holy Spirit and have the strength that the Holy Spirit gives us. We can't do it on our own, but we got to got to be able to trust in Jesus, have the 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 power of the Holy Spirit in us, and we can overcome with the help of that any temptation that's put upon us. And yes, thank the Lord for that. Jesus faced temptation and won. Jesus can help us win over temptation. And it's only through Jesus that we win in temptation. You know, when we could go through a, uh, a, a, a trial or a temptation or a sorrow or something to that matter, and we come out th through the dark tunnel and see the light again, we can only give God the glory for that because it was only by his help and his power that we have that that we were able to conquer that whatever it might be uh, let's go into Matthew there Matthew 3 and 13 and it says then came a Jesus from Galilee to Jordan unto John to be baptized of him Jesus baptized in water Eighteen years went by since the time of our last story. And that's pretty much not much recorded in that from the time he was 12 to the time he was about 30 years old. There's not, not much talked about in Jesus' life. 
Jesus was now about 30 years old. John was preaching and baptizing in the southern end of the Jordan River. Jesus came from Galilee to be baptized of John there. And then on verse 14 it says, But John forbade him, saying, I have need to be baptized of thee, and cometh thou to me? And you come to me, is what he's saying? And Jesus answered, said unto him, Suffer it to be so now, for thus it becometh us to fulfill all righteousness. Then he suffered him. John felt he was not good enough. However, Jesus told him, it, belong, it belongeth us, is fitting to fulfill all righteousness, is what he was talking. To do every right thing, Jesus set for example for us. We are ready to be baptized after our sins are washed away. You know, we... We're not to be baptized before our sins are washed away. I mean, you know, if you're still a sinner and you decide that you're going to, somebody's going to baptize you and, and wash your sins away, the only thing that's going to happen, you're going to go down a dry center and come back up a wet center. It's the only thing that's going to happen. And the, the only way we are ready to be baptized after our sins are washed away Water does not do anything for your sin condition. It's only through the blood of Jesus Christ. We've been told that and told that. And we know that, that. That it's only through the blood of Jesus Christ that our sins are washed away. But baptism is recommended. And is uh, uh, one thing that, that Jesus wants us to do. It's it's required, yes, that's the word I was thinking. It's, it's, it's required of us be, to show that we have put away that old, bad life that we were living and were resurrected with him, ready to live according to his will. Jesus had no sins, so he was ready to be baptized. John did baptize him. Verse 13, 16 says... And Jesus, when he, when he was baptized, went up straightway out of the water, and lo, the heavens were opened unto him, and he, he saw the Spirit of God descending like a dove and lighting upon him. Jesus baptized with the Holy Spirit. Jesus came up out of the water. It sounds like that, that it wasn't just kind of poured on his head or hands or something that sounded like they went down into the water to, to get the job done there. John had put him completely under the water, immersed him. The heavens then were opened. Why? Because the Spirit of God came down from there and lit, lighted on Jesus. The Spirit was not a dove. It was not a dove. But it says over here, listen, he, he, talking about the Spirit, looked like one. You know, uh, what was it that Elisha went up in a whirlwind and a chariot came between them? He didn't go up in a chariot in a whirlwind, but he went up in a whirlwind and a chariot came between him and Eli Elijah and Elisha. And, you know, he didn't see him then anymore. It's kind of the way I take that. Well, this, this is, it lit upon him like a dove, but it wasn't a dove. Why do you use a, use love, a dove? Why, is he, why do you use a, a dove? Well, a dove is a symbol of peace. And I think that's probably the reason why it, it, it was that away. Uh, now, that's my own uh, 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 Thoughts on that, but anyway, it was not a dove. It was the it was the Holy Spirit that came upon him. He looked like one, just looked like one. He came to live in Jesus and to direct his life. We cannot do a work for Jesus without the Holy Spirit in our hearts. 
You know, that is so true there that when we get ready to do a work for Jesus and when Jesus requires a work for us to do, He's going to be there right there leading us. The Holy Spirit's going to give us the power to be able to do what, what Jesus wants us to do. And all we got to do is trust in Him. And you know, sometimes we might think, well, that's so hard to do. Yeah, sometimes, you know, because you can't see the other side. But we have to put our trust in Jesus in order to make it to that other side. Jesus was now to begin God's work on earth. Now, see, he had the Holy Spirit now. And he was to do God's work. He, that's, that's, that's what he was brought here for, was to do God's work. Which included, which we're going to study maybe a little later today, which included miracles, the raising of the dead, and different, different things. But most of all was to buy our salvation. That was the main thing that, that his work was. But he had some other little job. You know, you know when your parents had you to do chores, you know, you, you might have had this one big chore, you know, but there was a lot of things that went with it. Well, that's kind of what God did to Jesus there. You've got one big chore to do, and that's to uh, get the salvation plan. But then there's other things that goes with it, that works with it. And so that's, that's, what, that's what it was. The Spirit gave him power to do it. The Spirit wants to live in each of us as he did in Jesus. He will if we will be saved from sin and yield ourselves to him. Be saved from sin. You can't yield yourself to him without being saved. That's one thing you have to be. You have to be saved first. And then you then you got the, 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 the decision to make. Do I yield to him or do I not yield to him? See? And, and yielding to him is the right way. Because if you don't yield to him, then you're going to lose your salvation. And so, the, uh, but you have to be saved before you can yield to him. Matthew, uh, ver, uh, verses 17 there. And lo, a voice from heaven saying, This is my beloved Son in whom I am well pleased. You know, this, this voice that came from heaven, it came from heaven. And that what it says, and lo, the voice from heaven. It wasn't a loud speaker. They didn't have some loud speaker there. They had a voice from heaven that came down. God spoke is what it was. Another surprise was that a voice from heaven spoke. Who was it? God the Father. That's who it was. He claimed Jesus as his son. Because what was said? This is my beloved son. Here at one time were all the personalities of God. God the Father speaking. God the Son coming from the water. And God the Spirit coming from heaven. In a form of a dove, look like a dove. That's what we just talked about earlier. But it was the Holy Spirit is what it was. This is the Trinity, all three. The Father loved Jesus. He was pleased with him. Isn't that what it says? The last few uh, words there. In whom I am well pleased. You know, you know if God... Uh, uh, well, we'll just take, for instance, the, your parents, you know. You always liked when they were well pleased with you. You always liked that, you know. The, you know, it kind of made you feel good when they would talk about you, you know, to other parents or other, other people. Well, my son done such and such, and, and, and I was well pleased with the work that he done. You know, it makes you, makes you feel good. Well, we want to feel good when it comes to God and being able to please Him, please God to the fullest extent because that's, that's, that's what He intends for us to do. Matthew 4 and 1, Then was Jesus led up of the Spirit into the wilderness to be tempted of the devil. The first temptation of Jesus. Before Jesus would be ready to begin His work, he must meet to conquer and conquer 
the devil. He must, he had to meet and conquer the devil. The first act we know of the Holy Spirit doing after he came into Jesus was to lead him into the wilderness to be tempted of the devil. And you know, we're going to be led into the wilderness at times. There's going to be temptations comes to, uh, come to us. There's going to be trials comes to, come to us. There's going to be sadness. There's going to be different things that, that uh, comes to us. But you know, we have Jesus t- to lean on. Jesus went through every temptation more or less like, you, like, like we would describe it with flying colors. Because he had the power of the Holy Spirit. He was wanting to please his Father. And he was wanting to conquer the devil in what he had to do there. Uh, Verses 2, 3, and 4 said, And when he had fasted 40 days and 40 nights, he was after a hungered. And when the tempter came to him, he said, If thou be the Son of God, command that these stones be made bread. You, you hear, hear that? The tempter said, if thou be the Son of God. You know, the devil, I know, was there at the, at the baptism. He heard what God told him. This is my beloved Son, whom I am well pleased. But, you know, even though Jesus knew he was the Son of God, the devil put that thought in his mind as to prove himself, to try to prove himself. Well, let's go on. But then Jesus answered and said in verse 4, and he answered and said, It is written, man shall not live by bread alone, but by every word that proceedeth out of the mouth of God. The temptation was he caught him in a time when he was hungry. He tempted him with something that would satisfy his hunger. The devil, when he catches us, he's going to catch us in a time where what he presents out there is going to look good. He does that every time. But you know, that's the reason why we have to stay in step with Jesus and keep the Holy Spirit. Hang on to that Holy Spirit and let the Holy Spirit lead us. Because he's going to catch us at our weakest, weakest time. But you know, like I said, nothing will come upon us but what we can bear. That God has promised us. Okay, let's go back. First, Jesus fasted 40 days and 40 nights. He ate nothing. Can you imagine going 40 days and 40 nights? I don't even think I... It's some, sometimes I don't even feel like I can go 40 hours. You know, that's two, almost two days, you know. Well, he went 40 days and 40 nights. Now, can't you imagine? Yeah, he was hungry. And, you know, fried chicken, mashed potatoes, and gravy would have sound real good to him. Well, I don't know if they had that. They might have had it. But, you know, a big old loaf of bread with butter on it, you know. You can, you can imagine how that would look. Just bread and butter. Just bread and butter, or just bread, really, you know, when you're that hungry. We do not know what temptations Jesus faced while in the wilderness. But when he came out, the devil was still trying to seduce him to sin. Caught him at this time. The tempter, the devil, came and tempted him to make stones into bread. You know, and I can imagine that them stones already kind of look like a loaf of bread. Now, that's my thought. It don't say that in the Bible. That's my thought. But, you know, they, they probably already look like a loaf of bread. Mm-hmm. They do. They, they, some of them do. And I'm sure that that's where the devil probably took him to. All you got to do is just turn them, turn, them into, turn them into bread. Yeah, here, here, and here. You know, all three of them. Just turn them into bread. That's all you got to do. came and tempt him to make stones into bread. Why was this a temptation? Because one, Jesus was very hungry. And number two, he was the son of God. The devil questioned it, but Jesus would not obey the devil. To get food or to prove his sonship, 
even though he could have easily turned the stones into bread. Instead, he quoted the Bible to the devil. Man shall not live by bread alone, but by every word of God. That's what he told, told Satan. You know, um, we have three incidents here of where, of where Jesus was tempted by the devil. And, and then finally the last one, Jesus says, get thee behind me. You know, when, when Satan comes on us, the best thing to do is just tell him right then. Get thee behind behind me, you know. And, you know, sometimes it seems like the devil will go, but then sometimes it just seems like he's always there pestering us, you know. But, you know, if we put our full trust in God, we don't have anything to worry worry about. We uh, uh, There was an incident just the last few days that that came upon us and we didn't know how it was going to be worked out you know we might in our mind think about well you know the Lord could work it out this way or work it out that way or you know and we can con- conjure up all kinds of ideas and usually when it happens it's quite a bit different than what we had conjured up and it always works out every time when it does and we do, we, we're thank- thankful to the Lord that it was worked out and that, you know, we were we left it in God's hands. We we said, Lord, you're you're gonna have to take care of this. And and he does. And we are we can rejoice then when that happens. Let's go into uh, verse five then. Then the devil taking him up into the holy city and set him on a pinnacle pinnacle of the temple, and said unto him, If thou be the Son of God, cast thyself down, for it is written, He shall give his angels charge concerning thee, and in their hands they shall bear thee up, lest at any time thou dash thy foot against the stone. Jesus said unto him, It is written again, Thou shalt not tempt the Lord thy God. The second temptation that's recorded. Next the devil took Jesus to the pinnacle of the temple or, uh, in Jerusalem. He told him to throw himself down to prove he was the Son of God. He already knew he was the Son of God. Jesus, Jesus is what I'm talking about. Jesus knew he was the Son of God. The devil knew that also. Because why do I say that? Because he knows it because they tremble at it. You know, it's it's written in uh, one of the other uh, epistles that that they they not only do they know but they tremble at it. Now he quotes the Bible to Jesus. Oh yeah, does the devil know the Bible? He knows the Bible. He knows the Bible. He shall give his angels charge over thee. I think that's uh, uh, written in Psalms, I believe, is where it is. I'm I'm not sure on that. Yeah, there it is. Psalms 91, I think, where it's at, 11 and 12. Let me just read that. For he shall give his angels charge over thee to keep thee in all thy ways. They shall bear thee up in their hands, lest thou dash thy foot against the stone. But he was, that devil was taking that out of context and twisting it around. Just like people out here takes a lot of things out of context. They take the Bible out. Oh, yeah, it sounds good, you know. Well, yeah, I've read that in the Bible. But, you know, if you don't have the Spirit of the Holy Holy Spirit, if you don't have the power of the Holy Spirit dwelling within you, you can get tripped up in that kind of stuff. And and, uh, and that's where where, uh, Satan was trying to do to Jesus there. This was a temptation. Let's see. Yeah, this was a temptation because one, Jesus was the Son of God. And number two, he could call for a miracle to protect him from harm. But he would not. He quoted Bible. That, and he says, well, this is what he says. Thou shalt not tempt the Lord thy God. And that's that's exactly what would have happened if if, uh, Jesus would have did something like that. Verse 8, again the devil taking him up into an exceeding high mountain and showed him all the kingdoms of the world and the glory of them. And he said unto them, All these things will I give thee if thou wilt fall down and worship me. The third temptation. The devil took Jesus to a high mountain. He showed him the kingdoms of the world. 
he offered to give them to him. For what? If thou wilt worship me. Was this a temptation? Yeah. Yes. Jesus came to win the world to himself. Wouldn't this be an easier way than to die on the cross? However, Jesus knew it would be wrong. You know, and Jesus went through a lot when he went to the cross. Jesus knew he was going to go through a lot when he went to the cross. We can, we can understand that by the, the prayer that he prayed in, I think it's Gethsemane. Lord, and sweat, great like as if as great drops of blood, he said, Lord, he says, Here's the cup in front of me. Take it away. If there's any way, take it away. But then he added something else. Nevertheless, not my will, but thine be done. And you know, if Jesus prays that prayer in something that we want removed from us, we need to use him as a pattern. Nevertheless, Lord, my desire is this, but nevertheless... Not my will, but thine be done. However, Jesus knew it would be wrong, this, uh, uh, by falling down. He knew the devil is a liar. He knew he could not save the souls of people this way. Verse 10 says, Then said Jesus unto them, unto him, unto the devil, Get thee hence, Satan, for it is written, Thou shalt worship the Lord thy God, And him only, only shalt thou serve. You can't serve any other God with God. You know, people out in the world or people that used to serve these uh, idols and all, they may have this idol to worship and this one and this one and this one, you know, and they, they may have a whole bunch of them. You know, I think Mars Hill had a bunch of idols up there. And I'm sure that, that a lot of people... Served a lot of them, you know. But God's a jealous God. You serve him and nobody else. Isn't that what it says? Thou shalt worship the Lord thy God, and him only shalt thou serve. Get thee hence, Satan, he says. He quoted the Bible. Thou shalt worship the Lord and him only. That's found in Deuteronomy 8 and 19 is where that's at. And then, uh, uh, um, and then the devil left. Uh, well, let, let me read this eleventh uh, uh, verse. Then the devil leadeth him, uh, leaveth him. In other words, the devil left, and behold, angels came and ministered unto him. Because why? Because he followed what God had planned for him. With the power of the Holy Spirit in him, that's how he got through these temptations. Was he still hungry? Yeah, he was still hungry. That was the first temptation. But he was still right with God. And that's the main thing. The devil left. Angels came. Perhaps brought him food and drink and spiritual strength. You know... That's probably what happened. I, I never thought of it that way, but that's what Brother uh, uh, Weindorf had written in the uh, junior commentary there, that they probably brought him food and drink, you know, because he had conquered what was set out for him there. Jesus had won. Now he can help us win through temptations of the devil. We can have the same help he had Why? How? Through the Holy Spirit. Just think of that. The Holy Spirit dwelled in Jesus, helped him through temptation. That Holy Spirit looks on us and thinks, oh, he's just a little Brother Larry, you know. We won't worry about him. No, that's not the case. He thinks about us. He knows everything about us. He knows And as vast as this universe is, he knows exactly everything about us. He knows everything. Even the hairs on our head are numbered, it says. 
It tells in, uh, in that uh, uh, verse, well, no, uh, in Luke, uh, in Luke's reading, it says that the devil departed from him. But he had also goes on and says, for a season, for a season, he always comes back. You can, you can count on that, that the devil is always going to come back. And you think, oh, man, that's, that's, that's terrible, you know, that he always, always comes back. Well, continue to trust in the, the Lord. Continue to trust in Jesus and continue to put your strength in the Holy Spirit. Let the Holy Spirit give you the strength that you need, you know, each and every day. Do we meet up with temptations every day? Yeah, probably. We probably do. You know, some of them are not that stout, you know. You know, they're not, not some of them. Some of them, you know, we overcome. But we still, even in them little temptations, keep our eyes on Jesus. Yeah, those little temptations are like irritation. Yeah. Yeah. Uh-huh. They're, they're like, na- uh, like uh, what do you call them? Nagging. Nagging. Like little, little nagging at you all the time. And, uh, and yeah, that's, that's what it is. And you know, they can wear you down too. So that's the reason why. Keep your eyes focused on Jesus. Keep the Holy Spirit. Keep the Holy Spirit. Okay, now our memory verse says, For in that he himself has suffered, being tempted, he is able to succor them that are tempted. For in that, because of being tempted, he is able to succor or to help, that's what that word means. Uh, he could not, uh, he could not help us if he had not first conquered that temptation. Say, how could he help us then? Say, no, he wouldn't understand. That's that's true. But he conquered that through the Holy Spirit, and therefore he's willing to help us in each and every every temptation we have then okay let's go on then into uh uh the next lesson there christ's miracles and the memory verse for that one is jesus answered them and i uh, answered them i told you and ye believe not the works that i do in my father's name they bear witness of me um the emphasis the junior emphasis is jesus christ has miracle power Christ has power over diseases, demons, and nature. Christ's power shows him to be the Son of God. We can tap into that power, uh, uh, if, but we have to be a Christian to be able to do that. We have to experience the things that God has has for us before we can tap into that power, but we can tap into that same power through the Holy Spirit. We are powerless without the Holy Spirit. And, and you know, if we don't have the Holy Spirit dwelling within us, then it's going to be a, a, a struggle. It's going to be such a struggle that Satan will over, overpower you. So that's the reason why I'm emphasizing the Holy, having the Holy Spirit within you because it takes that. We can't do it on our own. It takes the Holy Spirit. It takes Him being living within us to be able to uh, overcome the things that, uh, that uh, the devil sets out there because there's, there's traps out there. There's snares out there. And if we're not being led by the Holy Spirit, we're going to walk right square dab into one of them, them traps is what we're going to do. Uh, our uh, lesson there is Matthew 8 and 1. Now from the temptation to the time now, uh, Jesus uh, uh, preached the Sermon on the Mount there. And uh, so uh, we're picking up then after the Sermon on the Mount. There. 
When he had come down from the mountain, great multitudes followed him. And the second verse is, And behold, there came a leopard and worshipped him, saying, Lord, if thou wilt, thou canst make me clean. I don't know if I'm pronouncing that leper. Le- leper, I guess I should say. I don't want you to think it's a, it's a cat. It's a leper. Leper, leper, is the leper yeah. Right. Yeah. And I don't know, I, I, I don't know the, di- I can't say the difference between leper and the cat. The le- animal has the, a D on the leopard. Okay, okay, all righty. But anyway, this guy had leprosy. That's what happened. This guy had leprosy. What's wrong with leprosy? Well, for one thing, it's incurable. It is incurable. And I think today yet it still is incurable. But a lep- he came, the guy with leprosy came and wanted to be healed of Jesus. Jesus came down from the mountain where he had preached a sermon on the mount. And the guy with leprosy came. He had leprosy, a terrible disease that destroys different parts of the body and finally takes the life. So, you know, there's not a whole lot of of promise if you've got leprosy. About the only promise is you're going to die probably with it. He believed Jesus to be God. If thou wilt, this is what he says, if thou wilt, Thou canst make me clean or well. If thou wilt. You know, he had some faith. He had some faith. He believed Jesus could, but was not sure he would. That's, 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 that's what he was kind of leading up to. If thou wilt, thou canst make me clean or make me uh, well. And Jesus, on on verse 3 there, And Jesus put forth his hand and touched him, saying, I will. He answered his, his, his question there. I will. Be thou clean. And after a long time, this leopard finally was cleansed. That don't sound right, does it? And immediately, his leprosy was cleansed. Immediately. And Jesus said unto him, Okay, he's got a little job for the, the, the man with leprosy uh, to do. See thou, tell no man. Don't tell nobody. But go your way. He's got something else to do. Show thyself to the priest and offer the gift that Moses commanded for a testimony unto them. Jesus touched him, was not afraid. And he said, I will be thou clean. That's what Jesus said. The man was well immediately. And that is, that is something that does not just clear up immediately like that. You know, it has to be a miracle for that to happen. It was a miracle. And then he knew Jesus loved him. Jesus told him to tell no man. The best testimony would be for him to show himself to the priest and obey the law for healed ones. Now, Moses... There was a law given to Moses that if a person was cleansed from leprosy, that they were to go to, to priest and get the bill of health, a good bill of health, and then they were to be uh, uh, cleansed after a certain amount of time by offering offerings and cleaning themselves up and all that kind of stuff. There was, it, was, it was quite a deal. Well, that's what Jesus was telling him to do. You don't just... Oh, well, we'll do away with uh, Moses' law and you just go ahead and do whatever you want to. No, uh uh-uh, no, because they were still back under the law. And Jesus was following exactly what Moses, uh, uh, what uh, God had given Moses in that law. And so that's what he was doing. And, you know, I think the one thing as I was studying this, I was was wondering, you know, he was to go to the priest and and to the uh, religious groups, you know, and say, look, Jesus healed me of this, you know. Getting them prepared because Jesus knew what was going to happen later on, how the religious groups was going to persecute him, and they're mainly the ones that put him to death. But to show him, now you know this man had leprosy. He doesn't have it anymore. What has happened? 
Ask the leper, the guy that had the leper. Ask him, you know. Jesus healed me, you know, he said. But, you know, he told him not to tell anybody. But he had to tell the priest where it come from. I'm sure he had to do that. But anyway then, in verse 14, and when Jesus was coming to Peter's house, this is another one then, another miracle, he saw his wife's mother laid and sick of a fever. And he touched her hand, and the fever left her, and she arose and ministered unto them. Maybe she had coronavirus. <laughs> I thought of that this morning. I don't know. But, you know, she had a fever. It, it wasn't a funny thing. She was in bed, sound to me like. And, you know, when you have a fever, a lot of times you're burning up one minute. The next minute, you're freezing. And that is not a fun place to be. That is not a fun place to be. No doubt she was probably covering up one minute and then probably throwing the covers off the next minute, you know. And she was sick. The poor lady was sick. They went to Capernaum where Peter lived. Peter's wife's mother, Peter's mother-in-law was sick of a fever. Jesus touched her hand and the fever left her. Is that what it said? He touched her hand and the fever left her. And she rose and ministered unto them. No man could have done it. Don't you figure that they were doing everything they could to make her feel good? You know, to make her feel as good as she could feel? But you know, nobody, nobody could seem to have the right pill to give her or the right medicine or, or drink or whatever. You know, she was, old, she was sick there. Surely the Holy Spirit who came into him after his baptism was working with and through Jesus. You know, the Holy Spirit wants us to be that instrument that he can work in. He he uses people. He uses Christian people. He uses people that has put their trust in him. You and I. He wants to use. And be in the situation for that. The sick woman arose from her bed. And what did she do? She ministered unto them. It sounded like she got well real quick. It wasn't over a few days, but it sounded like it was real quick. Was it to prepare dinner or to give them uh, water for washing or what? We don't know. But she was happy to serve the one who had helped her. You know, when the Lord reaches down and touches you, and I'm sure each and every one of us has had the Lord to touch us sometime or another, you know, when you're going through that sickness or whatever it might be, you feel so helpless. If only I felt even a little better than what I do right now, you know. That's what you kind of think. But then when Jesus touches you and makes you completely whole again, completely well, you just, it, it, it's something to rejoice about. And it's something that needs to be rejoiced about because it was only through Jesus Christ that we were, uh, uh, that we're feeling a lot better then. And, uh, and I appreciate it when, 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 when things like that does happen. It's not anything that I've done. It's not anything that, that, that we've done. But it's what Jesus done for us. He's the one is to get the glory for that. Verse 16, when the even was come, they brought unto him many that were possessed with devils. And he cast out the spirits with his word and healed all that were sick. Verse 17, that it might be fulfilled which was spoken by Isaiah the prophet saying, Himself took our infirmities and bared our sickness. And he says, I believe is Isaiah is who he's talking about there. Um, uh, we might maybe could get him get 
when they write Isaiah in the New Testament, you might uh, uh, get mixed up with uh, Elijah or Elisha or something like that. I, I have a tendency to do that, but I have to think. I said, nope, that's, that's Isaiah is who they're talking about. But maybe nobody else has that problem, but it's Isaiah is what he's... It's just me. Okay. All right. <laughs> anyway, uh, anyway, uh, uh, Isaiah had already uh, 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 wrote some of this here. Devils cast out and sick healed. Evening, evening came. People came bringing many demon-possessed and sick people. What could Jesus do for these well, that's just too many of them, you know. Uh, I can't heal all of them. No, he didn't. He didn't say that. He went as the Holy Spirit led him in each one. Are you? Do you think that he done the same thing for every one? I doubt it. I doubt that he did. As the Holy Spirit led, maybe they brought this person and he and he made he laid hands on him. Maybe the next person. Maybe he didn't, you don't know how he done it. But he was led of the Holy Spirit, just like we have to be led of the Holy Spirit there. What could Jesus do for these? He cast out the spirits with his word. Devils are stronger than men are. Let's not forget that. The devil's stronger than we are. But he's not stronger than the Holy Spirit. And when you got the Holy Spirit within you, let the Holy Spirit do the fighting there. Amen. Nevertheless, Jesus only said the word and they had to obey. They came out of the people. Also, he healed all that were sick. This was more miracles. This was a fulfillment of Isaiah. Where uh, God always, and, and God always keeps his promises. Let me just look at that Isaiah uh, verse there. Surely he hath borne our griefs and carried our sorrows. Yet he did esteem him stricken, smitten of God, and afflicted. But he was wounded for our transgressions. He was bruised for our iniquities. The chastisement of our peace of, of our peace was upon him, and with his stripes we are healed. That's a promise that was given to Isaiah probably close to 700 years before Jesus was even born. And uh, so, uh, so, uh, but it's still true today. It doesn't make any difference. It's still true today. And now another incidence here. We might have time to go, go through this. And when he had entered into the ship, his disciples followed him. And behold, there arose a great tempest in the sea, insomuch that the ship was covered with the waves. But he was asleep. From what I understand, the Sea of Galilee, a storm can come up on the Sea of Galilee when they're on a real nice day. I have heard that. And, you know, they probably left and that water might have been like a mirror, you know. And then all of a sudden they get out in there and a the tempest raises. Now, I don't know how many has been on... On uh, on the lake in a boat, but uh, but uh, you know I have been very little on in a boat, but you know it doesn't take a very big wind to start rocking that boat, and I know by the time white caps starts being seen, I get very uncomfortable and 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 I want to get out of it. I don't. I think this is way past white caps, because <laughs> these boys was used to being on the on the lake, you know. And so, so I can see where their fear was, because I get kind of shaky at that time. And his disciples came to him and woke him. Whoa! What was Jesus doing? Saying, "Lord, save us! We perish." They had to wake him up. He was laying there peaceful. Had a hard day probably. Was tired. But he was, he was laying there peaceful. 
What is he? He wakes up and what does he say? And he said unto them, Why are ye fearful, O ye of little faith? And then he rose up and rebuked the winds and the sea, and there was a great calm. Isn't that something? Isn't that something? They were doing everything they could. You know, I, I'm not sure, but I think when they, when there's a wind to coming across a lake, I think you've either got to go into it or go with it, one or the other. Because if you try and go across it, that's probably what tips your boat over. Now, I may be wrong on that, but there's a certain way that you've got to go. On, on, on when it's windy like that and, and you're out in the lake there. But you know, they were probably doing everything they could, but it just, there was nothing that was working. And then after Jesus calmed and the, 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 the storm stilled, Jesus and his disciples entered into the ship, crossed the Sea of Galilee. Jesus, being tired, went to sleep. The great temptation tempest or the storm arose the wind blew waves over the over the ship frightened and fearing to drown any minute the disciples woke Jesus Lord save us they cried they was focused on the trouble that they were in they were focused on that they saw what kind of trouble they were in and they were focusing on that. But then, when they woke Jesus up, Jesus was focused on the salvation that was about to take place. He asked, why are ye fearful? <laughs> That's kind of a funny question to ask. You know, the wind is blowing, the water are hitting you in the face, and... Soaking you all that down. Why are you feel or fearful? Well, focused on that water. That water right there can kill us. You know, you know when he when Jesus came out of the the temptation after forty days, he was probably thirsty and he probably wanted water. You know, water water's a good thing. But then you're focused on this and water's a bad thing there, you know. But what does he say? He says, why are ye fearful? He said they had little faith. You know, he, I, I believe that was a little bit of a rebuke right there. Oh, you men, you have little faith, you know. You know, put your trust in me. Put your trust in the Holy Spirit. Put your trust in what God has for us. You know, I sometimes fit in this place right here of little faith. You know, sometimes I, 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 I focus on the problems when I need to just say, Lord, the problems are yours, you take over. And I have to do that. I have to do that. And when that happens, then it just calms down. It just calms down. Just like this, this, this lake calmed down. He said they had little faith. Had not they seen him do miracles? Well, they just did. You know, just days, days before this or hours before this. You know, the, the guy with leprosy was healed. Peter's mother-in-law was healed. There was uh, 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 evil spirits cast out. You know, seen all of that. What did they learn from it, though? You know, we need to take the things that God gives us and learn from those things. Did they not know with him they were safe anyway? Then he spoke, and this is what they were waiting for. They didn't know how it was going to happen, but he spoke the winds and the sea, and he rebuked them and commanded them to be still. Now my question is, did they obey? Talking about the wind and the and the storm, did it obey? They had to. The it had to. He had made them in the first place. He was there in creation. 
He can do anything with them. In place of the storm, there was a what? Great calm. There was a great calm. Uh, I don't think we read verse 27. Let's go ahead and read that so we can figure out where we're at here. When the, when the men marveled, saying, What manner of man is this that even the wind and the sea obeys him? There was a great calm. The disciples marveled. What does the word marvel mean? To uh, I, Well, I didn't look it up, but just unbelievable. You kind of, you know, you pretty much have to see it to believe it. And that's what they were doing. How great Jesus is. Jesus, being the Son of God, the creator of this universe, and the power of the Holy Spirit being there too, can get them out of trouble, that which they were in. And you know, he didn't just save that for the disciples. He didn't just save that for his early morning church. He didn't just save that for, for people hundreds of years ago. But he, he's here and he's ready to do the same thing with us. Not only diseases and devils, but also even the winds and the sea obey him. They ask, what manner of man is this? The answer is, he is the Son of God. Let's go ahead and read our memory verse there. John, uh, once more, John 10 and 25, Jesus answered them, I tell you, and ye believe not, the works that I do in my Father's name, they bear witness of me. Jesus said the works he did bear witness of him and of who he is. And of who he is. You know, we have the greatest opportunity. We as people have the greatest opportunity of anything in this world. You know, we're above the animals. We're above this and that and everything else. You know, everything was made for us because God loved us so much. And then when the fall in the, in the garden, okay, there came a separation. But you know, God even, he could have just said, well, I'm going to just wipe it all out and finish it. But no, he didn't. He had the love for us. He had the love for us to provide us with a plan of salvation that Jesus fulfilled through that plan that we can come and after we come to him, turn our heart and life over to him, the Holy Spirit indwells within us, he's still concerned with us. He still wants us to do exactly what he wants us to do. So I'm going to leave that with you. And next Sunday we'll be studying Christ sends out apostles then. And we'll see what happens then.